How do you pronounce your last name? Mudumba? Mudumba, yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 41 of Pixel Feed Radio. And I'm here with my friend, Regine Mudumba. How you doing, Regine? How, how are you? I, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. For those of you that don't know, Rajiv is I'm, I'm, I'm a man of many faces and qualities. So he's an author, a podcaster, a personal and professional coach, and a strategist. And that's what I wanted to talk to him. We actually met. I went on uh, on his podcast, Plan B Success, uh, which is awesome. I listened to uh, a few episodes since we since we did it, and uh, I really love it. And uh, he's the man. If you want to get on track, if you want to get organized, even like motivation, you know, because some of you you know tend to lag and make excuses. This is the this is the man for you. Uh, so I figure, you know, I invite him on and maybe give you give you guys some tips. And, uh, you know, how he gets it done. So, all right, let's get started. So, Rajiv, uh, before we get started in, in talking about, you know, uh, you know uh, strategy and, and, and all that stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? How did you get started? Sure. So, my background, you know, I've kind of been a professional over the years. That's what I do. I've been an entrepreneur at different points in life. And what I decided uh, about a year ago was uh, with a 20-year career behind me, there was a lot that I had in terms of uh, my experiences, expertise, skill set, tools that I've used, all this that I could share with people. And that's where my journey began with uh, starting my podcast, Plan B Success. And once I started the podcast, you know, I realized uh, very quickly what others were doing. You know, there, there are all these 20 somethings who are basically interviewing people and running podcasts. And then I decided that, hey, you know, I got a lot more to share, not just doing interviews, but I could uh, talk about stuff myself uh, from my experiences and expertise. And that's how with Plan B Success, I started doing uh, interviews, but at the same time, solo episodes. I pick a topic, I talk about it, and that's how I started sharing. So I got some tremendous response to that. And then I've been writing for a while, so very diligently now I blog as well. So all of this, it's just put some discipline into what I was doing. Um, and I think, you know, I, I kind of appeal to entrepreneurs, professionals and students, but there's a lot of people out there like me who could share what they have gained over the years. And my premise was very simple. My first episode on Plan B Success talks about it, which is, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, I don't want to look back and say, hey, there was so much I could have shared. I never had an opportunity to share it or I did not take the opportunity to share it. So this is my way of giving back. So anything and everything that comes to mind. I share on my podcast. The other thing that I do is obviously I've created courses. You know, I, I try to share through through that with people so that they could benefit as well. Right. So, okay. So now when it comes to, uh, you know, that's why I started this channel as well, because, you know, I, I, you know, I got to the point where, you know, when I started this whole journey of doing what I do, I had to dig for the information. It wasn't out there like it is today. So, you know, people ask you questions all the time. It's like, how do I do this? How do I do that? So that's why I decided to put out the YouTube channel and the podcast so I can share my knowledge and help people out at the same time. And it's a good feeling, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, it kind of reiterates uh, what what you have learned. Right? For me, it's a, it's a lot about reiterating it to myself. You know, you could have spent about a day or two on a topic researching it and there's one way to bring it all together to see what did you truly understand at the same time be able to share it with others so that whatever you understood they can too yeah and another thing that i like about you is that you you're a very uh motivational inspirational guy as well i always joke around that that stuff doesn't work with me because i just get shit done that's just the way i am but I do know people that need that, that, you know, they get, they get into these head games of, you know, maybe I can't do it or they try to make excuses for themselves. And what I like about you, like one of your books is just about inspirational quotes, <laughs> you know, which, you know, it's those little tidbits that, that help people. And I think it's a difference in the, I, I want to say the generations, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old millennial. I'm like right at the verge of old millennial and like Gen Z, uh, Gen X, right? Mm -hmm. So we grew up the way I grew up, at least. It, it was like tough it up, just get it done type of deal. And, you know, I grew up, my dad, you know, was an, was an entrepreneur, business owner. So I was around that my whole life. But people who are making that jump from never having dad around their family or somebody like pushing them, like just get it done type of deal 
you know, sometimes they need that little push. So I'm always curious about that. Like, how do you approach, you know, like, uh, especially the younger generation, because they're exposed to this whole fake lives on Instagram and, you know, even TikTok or Facebook, where they think that people just get rich overnight and they didn't work for it before. And a lot of people fake it, let's face it. So they get in this mindset with anxiety and that they're not good enough because they didn't make it overnight. So I think uh, a lot of the motivational stuff from your end that you do, I think that helps with that. So how do you approach that angle when you're talking to this younger generation, like Gen Z especially? So I think, you know, I kind of look at people, uh, I, I believe people fall into three buckets. So one would be people, like you said, right, who have uh, no idea what to do. You know, they, they're, they're basically in a, in a stage where they're trying to discover themselves. They just don't know where to begin, where to start. Now, that's one set of people. And then there's, there's another set of people who have uh, some semblance of a handle on who they are. They understand their passion. They would like to discover their purpose. And then they don't know what to do with it in terms of once they have clarity of purpose and passion, what do I do with it? And then there's a third set of people who are very clear about their purpose, very clear about their passion. They really know what they want to do in life but they just don't know how to go about it, the technicalities of it. So I believe there are people in these three buckets. And then, you know, there are introverts, extroverts. Um, and like you mentioned, you know, there are, culture has uh, an implication on different people, you know, people who are exposed to the culture, like the one in the US versus the one in the East. It's different people, different mindsets. So people are somewhere in this entire paradigm of that first bucket to the third bucket that I talk about. And every one of them needs a different level of help in order to get going. The one that is just beginning, the one that's just trying to discover themselves, they, they're not even thinking about, okay, what do I have to contribute to the world? They're at a point where they're thinking, who am I? What am I? What am I trying to do? You know, what's my purpose in life? And they need a totally different kind of help versus the one that says, hey, I'm very clear about my purpose. I'm very clear about my passion. I want to do this. How do I do this? And that's where that doing shit happens, right? That's where you need uh, steps one to 10. You follow, you get your results, you tweak it, you keep going. That's that's the kind of, uh, you know, mindset that they are in. That's the kind of help that they need. The one that are just taking off, all they need is a listening ear. They need a helping hand. They need somebody to be able to listen to them, whatever they have to say, and then be able to hold their hand and walk them through step by step to get to the point where they're clear about themselves. And a lot of people cannot do this on their own. They think they can, but they just cannot. You know, you might read books, you might uh, watch programs, courses, but you definitely need somebody to help you provide that clarity from an, a fresh set of eyes a perspective. And and I think that's where this motivation stuff comes in. You know, you're right. There's a, there's a whole school of uh, thought that, hey, all this is fluff doesn't help me. But there's another school of thought that says, you know, every time I read something, it kind of takes me back internally. I go back and try to put a finger on something raw within me that helps me discover a little bit more of myself. And I think that's the difference. That's where that motivation comes in. And that's where I try, I try to do it. You know, it's not about fluff. And a lot of this motivation that I'm talking about is something I have been through. You know, when you talk about that book, My Inspiration Quotes That Shaped My Self-Improvement Journey, I, I took it upon myself You know, for the last seven years. Every single day, after a day's worth of uh, life, I sit back at the end of the day and try to distill one thought from that entire day based on my experiences that I can put it in a quote format and leave it there. That's, that's what I've been doing for years. And then I decided I'm going to collect you take about five years worth of uh, work and put it in a book format. And that's what I did. And what I tell people is this is not fluff that just comes to mind. This is actual experience that I'm putting in the form of a quote. And my hope is somebody who is going through life and is at whatever point they're in, they don't have to read the book one way or the other, front to back or back to front. You open up a page. It's like, you know, people talk about the Bible. You know, you, you've got an issue in life. You open up a page and it'll, it'll speak to you. You'll find meaning in it. This is that kind of a book. You open up a page, you read a quote, and it will apply to you in some way or form and will help you take one more step forward in the journey that you're on. That's pretty awesome. So, okay, so I know the demographic of the people who are listening to this are mostly males, um, 25 to 35. 
And uh, just from the feedback that I get through messages and posts and stuff like that, some of them are still trying to find what to do in the entrepreneurial journey, while some of them are just looking to start something on the side to get out of their career. Uh, I know that's two different buckets, as you call it, but what would be your advice? Let's start with 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 the person that just doesn't know what to do. Like, what would you advise? What's your, your your advice for those people? And then we'll do the advice for the people that are trying to start something on the side to get away from the let's say nine to five. Sure. So for for both for both the kinds of people, right? Let's look at it. You want to do something. You want to do something from what you're currently doing. Obviously, you either are looking to grow or you either are looking to change. And the best possible place that you can be in is where whatever you do does not look like work. You're happy to spend the time on it. You're happy to refine yourself. You're happy to take that next step. That's the stuff that you got to put a finger on. Now, there are people who don't know what that is. And what they need is the help in that self-discovery process of who you are, what your passion is, what your purpose is, what will appeal to your tastes. Because it needs to appeal to you if you are going to get good at it and then be able to pass it on to others. At the same time, there are people that know, you know who they are and what they want to do. They just don't know, the, you know what, how do I put in a website? How do I do a podcast? How do I find my clients? How do I network? That's their problem, right? The, these, are, these are the two, uh, two ends of the spectrum. So on on the 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 first part of it, that self discovery. I have actually a course that I call uh, you know plan, plan B success uh, revive. You know that that's basically where you're looking at. I, I I'm a firm believer in plan B. A lot of people say don't have a plan B, go with a plan A. You know because if you give yourself a plan B, then you'll never succeed at plan A. I I think that's that's a bunch of crap. That's uh <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my uh. Well, I don't get into too many sales calls anymore because I don't have to. But, uh, you know, when I, I grew up in, in sales, I mean, that's my background, sales and business owners since I was, you know, a kid, basically. So I grew up in the cold calling days, the face-to-face -face sales, cold, uh, you know, knocking on doors. This is before all this digital stuff. And one of my uh, one of my mentors taught me one line for, like, objections. It's like, okay, well, if you get the objection, all you have to say, okay, this is plan A. What's plan B, John? And then right. silence. And then they like start thinking, it's like, oh, I don't have a plan B. Exactly. You don't have a plan B. I'm your plan A. So let's move forward. And boom, you close the sale. It's, it's, that's one of my favorite lines. I, I forgot about that one. But yeah, you got to have a plan B. You have to. I have plan A, B, C, D, and E now right. because I learned my lesson when the economy crashed in 2010 and I, I lost it all. I lost I lost it all because I was relying in one business, one stream of income, and I was young and stupid and I didn't save my money. It has to pretty much start all over again. And lesson learned, right? Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, we live in an imperfect world. You know, if, if it was really perfect, then you would wake up one day with all that you're good at and you would go and pursue the career that's no longer work. That's not how things happen. The way things happen is you go to school. If you do go to school, you study one thing, you end up in a job that's totally unrelated to what you have studied. You may like it. You may not like it. Some people decide that that's the path they want to take. Some others decide, hey, this is not what my calling is, you know, and they discover what their calling is over a period of time. Then they make that shift into what their calling is. Not a lot of people do that, unfortunately, but some do. And when they make that shift, that's where they start playing on their strengths. This whole concept of if you have weaknesses, recognize your weaknesses and spend the most time on your weaknesses. I think that's that's not right, too. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. So you got to embellish your strengths and look at what can you do about your weaknesses? Who can you find whose strength is your weakness and then find them to help you? You know, that's the stuff that you got to do and look at your strength because the, the if you have X amount of time and if you spend the same X amount of time on your strengths versus weaknesses, you're, you'll probably marginally improve on your weakness. But imagine spending the same time on what is your actual strength exponentially your strength will evolve it'll differentiate you from the competition out there and that's what people need to focus on right so for example to talk about what you're saying it's like okay in my channel i talk about sales digital marketing funnels you know everything marketing related but what i personally i know it all because it's all part of it without all of that you won't get sales online but when i get to pick like do i rather build a funnel myself 
or run Facebook ads. Like I'm obsessed with Facebook ads. That's what I'm really good at. And right. I know I'm one of the best in the world because I hang out with the best of the world. And, uh, but I know how to build a funnel. I know how to co do copywriting, but guess what? When it comes to building the funnel, I have a team that, that are better than me at copywriting and design. You know what I mean? So I mm -hmm. play on my strength and bring those people to be part of my team. It's like, listen, in my eyes, you guys are better than me at this. You guys concentrate on this and I'll concentrate on doing what I do to this, run the traffic to it. And you guys make it look pretty and convert. And I think a lot of people try to do it all, especially when starting a business, which, you know, sometimes you have to, you have no choice, but I'm a big believer that as soon as you can hand it off to somebody who's an expert, just hand it over right away. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you'd rather spend that time on what you're already good at, you know, and find people that love the other work that you do. And, and it kind of brings me back to the aspect of anything that we do, right? Podcasting, writing uh, books or, you know, speaking, everything. There's a creative aspect of it. There's also the, te the technical aspect of it. What you're talking about is, you know, there are not, not many people out there like you who love the technical aspects of, you know, being out there and connecting with the most number of people possible. You need technology. You need to work with it. You need to be able to do those funnels. You need to be able to do those Facebook ads. You need to be able to do take sales calls and all that. But, you know, a lot of people might say, hey, I love writing or I love talking and that's all I want to do. I don't want to do a deal with this other stuff. Hey, but it's a package. You know, you, you got the creative side of it. You got the technical side of it and it all goes together. So either, like you said, you, you got to learn it all, whether you like it or not. And... To, until you get to a certain point, you got to be the, you know, if not the master, but the jack of all trades, but you got to bring in the right people at the right points in them. I'd rather somebody take over, you know, the technical aspect of what I do and just focus on the creative aspect. That's, that's what I love. That's what right. I enjoy. And I, and I'm sure that there's much better quality output that can come out if all my time is invested there, you know? Right. So, yeah, I mean, I learn about everything and I, I you know, I built plenty of funnels myself and done copywriting and all that stuff and I, I'm good at it, but I'm not like I wouldn't put myself as in the same level as I am with Facebook ads. It's just it's not. Uh, but I keep learning about it because I'm upset. I love it. I love everything about it. And that's why, you know, I guess that's where I, how I got to where I'm at because I never stopped learning. I think I, one of the biggest mistakes is, uh, you know, even when I was in college, like I changed degrees like a million times until I finally dropped out and just started a business for real. Uh, you know, one, one week it was computer science because I've been building my own computers. I was a kid. I was the first one with Napster, you know, when Napster came out before it was popular. Uh, then the next week was business and mark, you know, marketing at one point in finance, you know, it's like, I was all over the place because I was young. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just wanted some type of business mm -hmm. and just the thought of working in an office for someone else just drove me nuts because I run you know, I grew up in a, in a household. My dad had his own business, a big company. And it's like, you know, he sold it by the time I was in college. So it's not like I could just go work for him. So being around that environment, I mean, that's what drove me. But at the same time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? I was a late bloomer in that sense. I wasn't, I mean, I was always selling stuff like baseball cards and basketball cards and whatever I could get my hands on. But I mean, you know, it's not one of those like crazy stories that I did it every day. You know what I mean? I had crappy jobs too, you know, and I didn't really, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, went in all the way until I started the real business at 23 and I did it, you know, I did it in a, in a niche that I thought I was passionate about at the time, which it was, with, had to deal with cars. And I mean, six months into it, I just hated it. And I did it for, until the economy crashed in 2010. And once the economy crashed, I was like, you know what, I'm done. I need to do something mm -hmm. else. So I, I took a year off to chill, figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, and then, you know, once I figure out again, that's when I went like full force. But, you know, again, I have that mentality of like, let's do it, let's get it done. And another thing I was thinking about, you know, from your books and all that, what you talk about is that I'm not thankful, I, I, I'm not thankful enough for what I have. You know, I find the wrong in everything that I do, that nothing's perfect. And I try to always improve everything that I do uh, or that I do for my clients when, you know, little things, you know, being an entrepreneur, you're, you're going to deal with, I, I call it dealing with shit every day that you have, that you just have to fix. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's basically what most of my day uh, it's part of. So when something goes wrong, I'm like, oh man, so annoying, blah, blah, blah. I got to deal with this now. 
But at the same time, I look around, you know, and it's like, wow, I should really be thankful for what I have because I've been broke before and I know what being broke is like, <laughs> you know, or not even just money, but like health and family and, and just happiness in general, right? Absolutely. I think gratitude is a big part of who we are and what we do. I, should, I think, you know, we evolve over our life, right? We evolve from time to time. It, there's never, you look at your own life and look back and say, was there ever a, in, in my entire life the picture perfect day where I said, this is it. I'd like to freeze this part of my life and that's about it. No, we evolve. We get better with day in and day out and, and that's what life is all about. And we need to look at our work that way too. You're right. Absolutely. We need to be able to take action. We need to be able to produce and deliver. But, you know, at a point in time, whatever you deliver and put out to the world out there is perfect for that point in time. So if we end up tweaking it until we get this ultimate perfection, there's no ultimate perfection out there. I'd rather put something out there and then go back and tweak it and put something else out there than wait a month, two, three before I consider it perfect and put it out there. Because by the time you put it out there, we live in such a fast world. It's already getting stale. Now you got to go back and look at how do I evolve this again? How do I change it? So don't worry about perfection. Just focus on action and take action. That That's what moves the needle for everyone. Absolutely. And another one, uh, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, because I'm sure you deal with this, you know, some at least, is that I've noticed that the, the younger generations, you know, past mine or younger than me, and probably mine, they just, you know, they don't talk about it. Is uh, especially in my line of work, you know, like, you know, when Facebook doesn't work, something breaks and then you're responsible for people's, you're dealing with people's money essentially, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of pressure to perform and to bring the results that they need because now they're not, you know, they're not making money. So now you're, I want to say your job is on the line. It's really not, but you know, uh, you want to, you want to do what's right for your client and you don't want to make excuses. So what I've noticed is that a lot of people that are, are in my field suffer from uh, mental anxiety, you know, not, not only stress, but like little like mental health and anxiety. And I think like people are more open about it now. Right. Or is mm -hmm. it or is it just the younger generations are more open about it than the older ones? Well, I think it's changing. You're right. People are more open about this mental anxiety, the stress and all that. Uh, but I think the, you're right. The general, uh, the younger generation has embraced this much more than the older generation. I do still believe that there's a lot of people that keep things uh, bottled up, that keep things to themselves and they're still struggling through life. There's a lot of people out there that still do that, you know. Uh, and I think what they need is that comfort feeling that there's a listening ear. There's, there's somebody who's willing to listen to them. There's somebody who's willing to work with them to help them out. And a lot of the work that we all do, you know, in terms of reaching out and sharing our experiences and being able to work with people in order to coach them and all that is nothing but offering that kind of help. And for a lot of people, it might be very difficult even to ask for that help. And yeah. that's why it becomes so important to make sure that when you're re reaching out, you are not judgmental. You reach out in order to help people genuinely. And that's what is going to bring them to you. And that's what is going to help you become successful too. I just don't understood why some people will be judgmental of that. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's obviously, I don't know. It's just one of those things growing up. I was always taught to treat everybody with the same respect, just like you would like to get treated. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. kids are going to be kids, obviously. But, you know, when you're older, if somebody comes to you with that problem, even if it's just a coworker or something, I never understood why people will like put it down or make fun of it. I never experienced it myself, but you know, I've heard stories and I think that's a sad thing. I think we need a little bit more compassion, especially in, in nowadays that, you know, especially in the U S man, the U S it's like, it's like Japan. It's like, you got to work 24 seven and no days off. Right. Which I don't think it's healthy at all. And now with, you know, with, with, you know, the whole thing with Corona, you know, that a lot of people are working from home now. I think all these people or companies and clients expect them to be on 24 seven. And there's not that difference throughout the day of, Hey, I'm leaving my house and I'm going to the office and now I'm at work and I'm leaving work. And, you know, we're always connected with our phones and everything else. So, you know, what do you recommend people do just to, to, you know, relax and be able to, to separate both, especially now that everybody's cooked up in a house. I mean, I've been working from home for years and years and years now. So, I mean, even, even it gets to me sometimes I get tired of being at home, you know? Uh, so I'll, I'm in a place where I can go out, I can chill, I can go out to lunch, blah, 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 blah. 
and then come back and, and, and do my work. But I think a lot of people are having a hard time separating books since they're in home and they're like singing their pajamas all day long. And listen, I'm guilty too. I'll wear shorts and a t-shirt most of the day, but I think they don't have the discipline because they're not used to it. And yeah. they just treat it as I'm just hanging out at home and, 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 you know, I'm just getting on the zoom call and that's it. What, what do you recommend for people out there who are listening to this or watching this that to separate, how, how, how can they work on separating you know, working from home and being at home to be productive. Absolutely. So I think, you know, one of the things that you mentioned is so right, right? So we are, we live in times when many people are working from home. Uh, we've kind of lost track of uh, time too, you know, weekends and weeks mix up. Uh, it's difficult. I to joke say around all. I joke around all the time. I'm like, I don't even know what day it is until I look at my calendar. Right. It's like, oh, okay, I have meetings to that. You know, it's like because right now I'm not going out and doing stuff because of everything that's going on. You know, absolutely. And then I think one of the things that people need to do, and you know, I try to do it at, at my own home, right, with the kids uh, having online schooling right now, with you working. You know, we're all in different rooms. Um, you know, you you can't everybody can't cram into one study because you know everything is the and sit with headphones on. You know, some some people like to do it without headphones. And also we, we're all in different rooms, different desks and all that. Um, you know, we have stipulated times in terms of uh, the discipline that you talk about in terms of when we start and when we stop. Uh, you know, we take our lunch breaks. We, you know, the, the good part about it is you kind of get to have lunch uh, together, breakfast together and dinner together, which is great. Um, and, but then, like you said, the, you know, the day as to when it ends in terms of people walking away from work, that has also changed for a lot of people you know they continue to work uh, through the night in some cases and uh, you know i've heard stories of a lot of people trying to work uh, keep up with work and as a result spending a lot many hours and i think you know people need to recognize that uh, it's not healthy people need to recognize that they need to have uh, very disciplined uh, strict start and stop times they need to be able to convey that have that communication with their leadership their teams in order to set uh, example if you're if you're a leader and you you actually are responsible for a team you need to set that example as a leader so that your team can follow through if you start showing up anytime online guess what your team is pressurized to do that as well whether they like it or not and uh, honestly you know eight hours is uh, is a lot I, I don't even think eight hours people are productive you know maybe the optimal is four to six hours when you're at your productive peak and then it starts dwindling down so any output that you're getting with all these hours being spent on work you're getting mediocre output so it's not worth it so people need to recognize that um, companies and leaders need to recognize that and then the other thing is you need to consciously include things that you probably never thought of you know you used to spend about let's say you're a person who spends about two to four hours just commuting well you got those two to four hours back what are you doing with it are you going out for a walk you know um i know it's social distancing and all that but what are you doing are you guys uh, playing with the kids in the backyard those kinds of things i think things that you need to include the other issue that we see is a lot of time being spent in front of the tv you know and yeah. ban apparently irrespective of how much bandwidth is coming to your home everybody's having issues with uh, the way internet's functioning nowadays why because there's so many people out there using it you know that's the only way to connect with the outside world right now so you need to have some discipline around that you can have quality time that you can spend with your uh, families you can cook together you can you know do uh, work around the house together there could be small projects you can pick up think about all the amount of time that you can really spend on enriching relationships right at home um, you know, as far as friends and family, extended family is concerned, you got to be a little bit disciplined there too, where, you know, what I try to do is we try to do some Zoom calls over the weekend, you know, with distant family, you know, I've got family out in India, we try to do that, you know, everybody's in the same boat here. Coming back to the point and compassion that you talked about, we're in a different world and I think we're probably a little bit more compassionate now. One of the good things that's come out of COVID-19 is there's much more, uh, everybody's in it together. And there's that much more compassion that I see in people like, you know, earlier, think about it. Or when we had this 3% or 4% uh, and under unemployment rate, if there was somebody out of a job, uh, and I, I, I see this constantly on LinkedIn, and they're reaching out to people to help out, not a lot of people are interested in helping out. Now, you actually see people reaching out and saying, hey, I know it's difficult times. 
if there's anything I can do for you, if I can put in a good work, I can uh, good word, I can connect you to somebody in my network. Do reach out. I'm willing to help, and people are doing that, which, which I think is a great thing in terms of how it's bringing people together too. Yeah, I mean, when when all this thing hits, you know, I'm, I'm, where I live, I've been in the community for a long, long time, and I've made friends with people who own all these like you know service locations like restaurants and bars and stuff like that. I went ahead, you know, I I'm still helping some of them just because they got hit hard, you know, luckily, you know, for myself, I didn't have that issue because all my stuff is online, but you know, it, it, you're right. People are more compassionate and they're helping each other out, which I think it's great. You know, it's pretty awesome. So that's cool. Uh, the other thing that you've done that I wanted to touch up on, you've done some keynotes uh, internationally and, and public speaking uh what what kind of show is it what type of uh public speaking engagements have you been involved with so there have been a couple you know on the professional side of things it's been mainly healthcare. that's what i've been focused on over the last 20 plus years so i've been at uh, uh different events basically speaking about healthcare as well as uh, the new technologies new solutions new companies startups evolving within the healthcare space on the personal development front it's been more around motivation uh, and it's about helping people, you know, like I uh, like uh, I talked about some of my courses. They're very, very focused on, you know, here's the here's this group of people that need to be brought in touch with who they are as people, what their passion is, purpose is. That's the discovery part of it. There's a totally different program that I run. It's called the Plan B Success, you know, uh, Revive in terms of uh, who they are. And then on the other side of it, there's the Plan B Success Blueprint, which is about, hey, you you know what your passion is. You know what your purpose is. What do you want to do? You want to run a podcast? You want to run a, write a book? You want to uh, create a course? Here are all the different tools and techniques of, of doing it. Here's a blueprint in terms of following through and getting to where you want to be. So that's a totally different one. That, then, then I do have people reaching out on thinking about podcasting, starting a podcasting. How do you go about it, right? You're putting your voice out in the world. You might have never, ever done it in your entire life, and it might be new to you. For some, it's about just climbing over that mountain of how do I put my voice out there. Uh, for some, it's about I do want to do it. What's the best way to do it? For some, it's about I've started it. How do I grow it? And for some others, it's about, okay, how do I monetize it eventually? So I try to help them out as well on, on those journeys. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And on that, on that note, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today, for being on, and for and thank you for having me on your podcast. I can't wait to listen, uh, you know, when you put it out. Uh, and Rajiv, where, where can everybody find you? I know I'm going to put the links in the description, but still tell some people where they can find you. Sure, absolutely. Products. So, you know, the, I have a personal website. It's called rajivmudumba.com. You know, the, my first name, last name dot com. You can find me there. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you know, wherever you go to Twitter. And then I have my podcast. It's called Plan B dot live. It's available on that website or anywhere you listen to podcast. You should find be able to find it. Plan B success. Right on. And for those of you listening to the whole show or watching on YouTube, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel or the podcast for that matter. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Rajiv, thank you 